let's talk about the modern web. Everybody kind of knows how bad the modern web is these days, and I'm sure you've experienced it firsthand because sites like Reddit, which went from being a well-designed, if not a little bit dated website, now it is a slow buggy monstrosity that loads in megabytes of trackers and legs my browser every time I navigate to it. And the old version of Reddit was perfectly fine, so why did they have to make it almost completely unusable now? Even simple informational websites like news websites or recipe sites, they have been so jam-packed with so many scripts that it can take minutes to fully load a simple web page. And so in this video, I want to go over how this happened. So the simple answer for a lot of this is the web's current obsession with JavaScript. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with JavaScript. People like to dog on JavaScript a lot, but inherently there's nothing really wrong with it. If you want to have any sort of interactivity on your website, you're going to use it. But the problem really arrived with the popularity of JavaScript frameworks. So maybe you've heard of React, Angular, Vue, and many, many more frameworks like this. These are basically tools that web developers use that abstract a lot of things in development away to make it easier to create richer, more dynamic web applications. So basically what I'm saying is these JavaScript frameworks allow for highly interactive web apps with a lot of moving parts. And that's basically what they're used for because the most popular React, it was originally developed by Facebook. And that's because it's very hard to have a website with the level of complexity that Facebook has without using a complex JavaScript framework. And so these JavaScript frameworks, they work best as single page applications. So these are basically websites that you would expect to behave like applications. So for something like an admin dashboard, it makes sense to use one of these frameworks because you're going to be constantly creating and adding and editing things and you don't really want to have the page refresh every time you take an action. That would get really annoying really fast. And so these frameworks work best for websites that have kind of a medium level of interactivity. That's kind of the sweet spot for these JavaScript frameworks. But the problem comes with how widespread the adoption of these JavaScript frameworks was. Now, look, some of these websites, they make sense using something like React. But soon enough, cooking websites were using React. News websites were using React. Reddit's now using React. And none of these websites really need to use React. The front end of these websites doesn't really need to be that complex. But the reason why React and these other JavaScript frameworks really took the internet by storm is because of how they were marketed. So basically, whenever these first came out, they were the next greatest thing in web development. And if you were a web developer back then, I mean, even now, you're basically an idiot if you're not using one of these new frameworks. You're basically stuck in the past. And if you're still working in something like PHP, people are laughing at you. And these new frameworks aren't even necessarily better than the old way that people were doing things. It's more of just peer pressure because everybody else is doing it. These days, people will ask if they should learn React, one of these JavaScript frameworks, before even learning JavaScript itself. And I've been a web developer for a long time. And for a long time, I was just happily making HTML and CSS websites when I was a kid. And then I later moved on to WordPress websites if a client needed it but I was working on pretty basic websites. But once you start following any web developer influencers, I'm talking about the guys on Twitter who are always talking about the new latest greatest technology that everybody needs to be using right now. So you would hear these people on Twitter or on a podcast or see a blog post by them. They were always talking about how you need to do things the new and improved way. Or basically you're going to get left behind because this was presented as the future of web development and nobody wants to be left behind. And so of course, that's what I learned. I started getting into React, but soon people were using React even to build things like static websites. So I'm talking about a very basic website, maybe a blog, maybe a web page for your dog. And people were so into doing things this new and improved way, the JavaScript framework way, that they came up with this thing called Gatsby. So Gatsby was a really cool static site generator, but powered by React. And so you could have a blog or just a simple informational website, but once your website loaded, it hydrated into a fully featured React app. 
and you get these cool seamless transitions like you click onto a, a new page and it doesn't reload the page it just kind of instantly takes you there and i remember thinking that this was the coolest thing ever it was really slick and so of course i built my personal website with this framework why wouldn't i but then after I finished with it, it felt a little bit weird because my website was loading slower than before. So at the time, the slogan for this framework, the slogan was, it was fast in every way that matters. And it definitely felt very slick, but very slow. Because when you first try this, it does feel a little bit faster because like I said, it doesn't have to reload the page in order to get new data. But the initial page load of loading my website in for the first time was noticeably much slower. That's because it had to load in all of this JavaScript and parse all of it before it even displayed any HTML. And of course, parsing hundreds of kilobytes of JavaScript takes much longer than parsing maybe 100 kilobytes of CSS or HTML. And so after I built this, this was my first inclination into realizing that something might be wrong with modern web development. Why am I building this simple website, which should just be HTML and CSS? Why does this need React? Of course, this is a very extreme example, building a, a completely static website with React, but it just left me with kind of a bad taste in my mouth. Like, really? This is supposed to be the future of web development? Not to mention that the process of building this website caused so many headaches. So I was building my website with Gatsby version 1, but you know, in tech these days, people like to move fast and break things. And so while I was working on this project, they upgraded to version 2 of Gatsby. And switching to it was a major headache because there were so many incompatibilities between the two versions. I essentially had to completely rewrite my website. And this is just kind of the feel of working with these modern web frameworks. Everything's always changing and you constantly need to be on top of things. And if you're migrating into a new version, things are just going to break. You're just going to have to rewrite things and fix things because there's so many moving parts in your website that you need to pull in all of these dependencies from all different kinds of people. So even just a basic hello world example these days, at least for Gatsby, this framework I was working in at the time, it brings in like a thousand packages and all of these packages add up to hundreds of megabytes just to create this very basic hello world example. It's really ridiculous. And you can imagine what happens when websites are so complex, they really become fragile. And a lot of these projects, if you come back a year or two later and you try to download them again and edit something with it, it literally doesn't work because everything has changed, like the Node.js version has changed. And so it's no longer compatible with all of these old libraries. And if you upgrade some of these libraries, then they're incompatible with other libraries. It's really a major headache working with all of these frameworks because there are so many moving parts. But with everything I've told you, you might now be wondering why anybody would want to use one of these complex frameworks. Like, it might make sense if you have a complex web application that has a lot of interactivity, but most websites using these bloated frameworks don't meet these descriptions at all. But one big reason why a lot of people use these frameworks is the so-called developer experience. So this is kind of a marketing term that a lot of these frameworks throw out. And so what this essentially is, is it's the most fun technology for developers to use. That's really what the developer experience boils down to. Because when you use one of these frameworks, it does a lot of nice things for you. Like I said, it does things like minify your JavaScript, minify your CSS. These days with every framework, you can have hot reloading. So you make one change to the website in development and it instantly updates while you're working on it. And if you had been like me and been making websites the old way for a decade before, then the first time you use a JavaScript framework, it seems almost magical. You can easily import snippets and libraries from millions of NPM packages with a simple terminal command. And the idea is that if you make things easier for developers, then it's going to kind of trickle down into a better user experience. If we can develop new features faster, of course that will make everything better for the users, right? Not only that, but working in decades old technology is boring and the newest framework trending on Twitter is much more appealing than using what you always have. It can also be fun to imagine yourself using the cutting edge technology that a startup would be using. Like maybe you got a job at the New York Times, an old dusty newspaper, but you wish you were working at Twitter. So you use all of the cool new technology that they use. And so if all of these tools are making the developers more efficient, 
what's wrong with that? Of course, all of this comes at a cost, and probably the biggest cost is performance. And I'm sure you've heard that if your website is slow, then you're probably going to lose business. Because if you're a customer that's going to your website for the first time and it's very slow to load and very laggy, of course people aren't going to stay on your website for very long. But these kinds of performance regressions aren't really felt until much later, until it's actively hurting the business. Because whenever you first use these frameworks, they feel pretty fast until you have to load in all of the dependencies and all of the ads and trackers that are also required on your website. And after you add in everything, it really slows the website to a crawl. But let's also talk about who this affects, because let's face it, a lot of developers are using uh, M1 MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that's on the developer side of things. These are the people in Silicon Valley, California, and they're using top of the line equipment with blazing fast internet connections in developed countries. But of course, this affects people using rural connections and those in developing countries. They don't always have the fastest internet. Not to mention that, but a lot of people are using older devices with four gigabytes of RAM or less. And this noticeably affects how long the page loads because again, it has to parse all of the JavaScript that takes computing power. And this becomes even worse on phones because let's face it, a lot of people, most people these days use the internet on their phone. And these websites just drain your battery like no tomorrow. Have you ever navigated to one of these websites on your phone and just literally watched as your battery drops before your very eyes? And these sites just provide a worse user experience. So have you ever clicked the back button just to find out that it doesn't work like you would expect it to? That's because the back button has been hijacked by the JavaScript framework that that website is using. And if they didn't implement it correctly, well, oops. And have you ever gotten caught in an infinite loading circle? Well, that's just because all of the JavaScript didn't load in. Because a lot of these frameworks, they initially load in no HTML at all, and they only load in JavaScript. And don't worry guys, because that's a feature, not a bug. And if the JavaScript doesn't load in for whatever reason, well, uh, let's not worry about that. And so that is why every website these days just feels slow and bloated and buggy. Now, a lot of people have already complained about this. I'm definitely not the first person to notice this, but as a web developer myself, I actually want to see the web become better. And there is some light at the end of the tunnel because a lot of newer tools are starting to move away from this idea that everything has to be a single page app. So some newer frameworks like Astro, which I've previously covered on this channel, they combine things like the nice developer experience of using frameworks like React while keeping the end user in mind. So you can use all of your cool JavaScript frameworks, but when the site builds, it only uses JavaScript when necessary. So it still loads in HTML and CSS like you would expect, and it only uses JavaScript when the site actually needs it to be interactive. And this is how things are supposed to be. Now, people are finally kind of waking up to this situation, and people are taking the trend of more sensible frameworks with less JavaScript shipped to the end user. And I do think it is a good thing, but I still think that it's kind of going in the wrong direction because the build process is still extremely complex and fragile. Like in Astro, this framework that I reviewed, it still needs 146 megabytes of dependencies just to build a basic hello world with Astro. So I'm still not completely sold on some of these new frameworks. Now it should go without saying, but for simple websites that don't have a lot of interactivity, JavaScript is almost never needed. There are things like static site generators now, like Hugo, which I have covered in the past. That is still one of my favorite tools that I use to build websites. But these tools like Hugo, they have never been better and you can build huge complex sites quickly and you don't have to query a database for every post like you do with something like WordPress. So for building small to medium sized websites, this is definitely the best option, I think. But I think just being aware of all of the issues with the modern web is the best first step. And when you're building a new website or a new project, really ask yourself, do you need a JavaScript framework? Even if it seems like you're saving a lot of time at the beginning, you can run into a lot of issues down the line with these, especially when we're talking about performance, which can definitely impact if people actually want to use your website or not. And so before you start a new project, just ask yourself, does it need this framework? And is there any better, more efficient way to build what I'm thinking about?
And so that's how I got to the current state of the web. And my dream is that someday I will be able to browse Reddit without having to crash my browser. Maybe someday. I can dream, right?